the foundation of daily health, comprehensive nutrition, and gut health support in one simple scoop. Is this supposed to make me want to buy this? Mmm, green, grassy sludge. But it'll make me swim and bike good, so worth it? If you frequent YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or any social media site, you have probably seen influencers shilling for this stuff, Athletic Greens AG1. With 75 ingredients, it's so much more than a green powder. It's got vitamins and minerals. It's got superfoods, nutrient-dense extracts, digestive enzymes, adaptogens, probiotics. It's got electrolytes. And it actually tastes really good. Look at that grassy, gritty yumminess. <laughs> to be fair, I have not tasted it. Maybe it's actually good. Although earthy and sediment at the bottom of the glass doesn't bode well. And I don't know if the people promoting it are just shills. Maybe they really do like it regardless of the money they're getting to promote it. What I really want to know as someone who has not used this, I have been emailed asking me to promote it. What's actually in this stuff? What are these 75 ingredients? Let's start with the basics. We've got vitamins and minerals. At first glance, this seems pretty comprehensive. A, C, E, B vitamins, calcium, zinc, selenium, pretty high amounts of several nutrients. C and E are much higher than the daily value, but they're still well under the upper limits. Same for the B vitamins. Higher zinc, but that is also still well under the upper limit and might actually be a good thing for vegans. We might need more zinc than the RDA, possibly 50% more. But a few key micronutrients are missing. Where's the vitamin D? Where's the iron? Iodine, choline. Now, Athletic Greens should have some iron in it from the broccoli powders and all of that stuff, and some iodine too. There's kelp powder in there, but I'm guessing not very much given that they're not listed. I'm not saying a supplement needs to provide everything in perfect amounts in order to be useful, but clearly this is supposed to replace a multivitamin among other things, and most multivitamins contain vitamin D, iron, iodine, choline. And vitamin D, iron, and iodine are all pretty common deficiencies. If you're gonna take a multi, probably a good idea to have those in there. And the B12 in this might be a problem. It's in the methylcobalamin form, the active form. It's also the less studied form. Cyanocobalamin has been studied a lot. It's pretty clear how much you need to take if you're taking it on a daily basis, multiple times a day, once a week, how much you should take for sufficient B12. It's not so clear for methylcobalamin. Recommendations are usually around 1,000 micrograms per day. Athletic Greens has 22 micrograms, so I definitely would not rely on this for my B12 needs. Finally, AG1 is not a protein supplement. 50 calories, only two grams of protein. To be fair, they don't advertise it as a protein supplement. It just really surprised me. I, I guess I assumed it would have good amounts of protein. I guess because Vega, Vega has the protein and greens thing. And there's some other green blends that are green, you know, protein blends. I just assumed it would have more than two grams of protein. But Athletic Greens is not just vitamins and minerals, it's also all of this stuff. We've got spirulina, apple powder, wheatgrass, green tea, ginger, kelp, all nutrient dense and raw and alkaline. Super cool perpetuating the alkaline diet shit. Love that. Something else super cool, 7,388 milligrams for all of it. That means we have no idea how much spirulina or beetroot powder or alfalfa powder is actually in this, only that they all add up to 7,388 milligrams. Which is a problem because dosage matters. If we look at ginger, which is included in this, as a digestive aid for nausea and gas, which it can be at certain doses, typically one to three grams. Does this superfood complex contain one gram of ginger? It's possible since the whole thing is 7.4 grams, but ginger is almost the last thing on the list, so probably not. Now, I did contact Athletic Greens. I sent them an email on the off chance they would tell me the amounts of each ingredient in this blend and the other ones. They got back to me really fast, like seven minutes fast, which good sign, maybe? The quantities of raw superfood complex, nutrient-dense extracts, digestive enzymes, and super mushroom complex in AG1 are unique parts of all of the work put into making AG1 a formula of the highest quality, and therefore we are not able to disclose the exact amounts. You could have just said no. So yeah, it's proprietary, which fine, but also 
not fine. Th this means they just want us to trust them. We're not going to tell you the amounts of anything in this bag, the bag full of stuff you're going to consume, but just trust us that the ingredients are in meaningful amounts. Trust the people who believe alkaline is a meaningful descriptor for food. No thank you. Then we have the nutrient-dense extracts, herbs, and antioxidants, and we run into the exact same problem, 2,732 milligrams for all of it. Although we might have a little clue since pea protein is listed first, excuse me, alkaline pea protein. We know there's two grams of protein in a serving. Given that everything else in the bag would provide zero to tiny amounts of protein, there's a good chance that pea protein is providing most of the two grams in a serving, which would mean it's providing most of the two grams in this blend, leaving around 700 milligrams. And I love how they hype up the pea protein. It's a complete protein, if they think or are willing to pretend two grams of protein is meaningful, what else are they hyping up? What other ingredients in tiny amounts are they pretending is meaningful? Milk thistle for liver health? Does AG1 provide 210 to 600 milligrams in a serving? I'm skeptical, especially after looking at the last one, the digestive enzyme and super mushroom complex, 154 milligrams for the whole thing, including reishi mushroom. Regardless of the weak evidence for the health benefits of reishi, a typical dose is well over one gram. And I feel like one gram is a lot more than 154 milligrams. This basically confirms my suspicion that Athletic Greens is another for Sigmatic. You have a supplement company that has no problem using nebulous claims to promote the product and really doesn't care about dosage, doesn't care about science. To be fair, Athletic Greens is more useful than Four Sigmatic. Again, it does have vitamins and minerals that you could get from literally any other multi. <laughs> and that's about the only positive thing I can say about Athletic Greens. It's not as bad as Four Sigmatic. But wait, I haven't said the price yet. I've talked about some expensive supplements on this channel. None of them hold a candle to Athletic Greens. $99, 30 servings, one month supply, hundred dollars. I don't want to paint every person who promotes this as just a shill for the company, but honestly, how many people would promote this? How many people would even buy this if it weren't for the company giving it to them for free and paying them to say it's good? A good rule of thumb that I use for myself is, was there any sort of hype before influencers started promoting it before it was a sponsorship deal. So a good example is something like Audible. I don't know if you remember several years ago now, every YouTuber was promoting Audible. Well, Audible existed long before any of that and was a great and still is a great, well, I assume I haven't used it in a long time, but obviously Amazon, Audible, everyone knows what that is. It wasn't just some weird out of the blue supplement. Something just pops up and it's constantly people being paid to talk about how great it is, and that's really the only context you see it in, and you've never heard of it before, be skeptical. Finally, lead. Consumer Labs did test Athletic Greens AG1 and found some lead, 2.1 micrograms in a serving. Still low, but more than many of the fruit and vegetable supplement things that they tested. So definitely avoid if you are pregnant, which Athletic Greens does say. They say it's not for pregnant women or children or talk to your doctor, something like that. But they do say it's fine to have more than one serving a day. If I were using this, I wouldn't feel comfortable with that. Shock of the century, but I would never purchase this product. It's so overpriced and really doesn't make sense, especially for vegans. It's got more vitamin C than you would ever need. What vegan doesn't get enough vitamin C? I guess if you live on coffee and cereal. So me, but you're probably not doing that. You probably get plenty of vitamin C. And then it doesn't have vitamin D or iron iodine, choline, things that vegans can actually be low in. No DHA, but to be fair, most multis don't contain DHA either, but also most multis don't cost more than $3 <laughs> per serving. You could buy a multi and a separate DHA supplement and it would still be way cheaper than Athletic Greens. I don't know how much of anything is in these blends and regardless, I'm not convinced most of these things do what they supposedly do. And who cares that it has 75 ingredients? That just means there, there's less things in the, in, the, in the ingredients, it's spread thin, right? Because there's only so much green, grassy shit that people can gag down. 
And taking a bunch of stuff at once is really not a good idea. If you are convinced that reishi mushroom is actually beneficial and you want to start taking it, it makes a lot more sense to get a dedicated reishi powder that actually tells you how much is in a serving. And then stop there. Take just that for a while. Otherwise, how are you going to tell what's affecting your mood or your energy or whatever? And as always, consult with your doctor. I probably don't need to say, but Consumer Labs does not recommend Athletic Greens for basically all the things I said here. It's very, very pricey. You don't know the amounts of things that are in it. And there are other better options. For those curious, I take Deva, specifically the Deva prenatal, which is actually Consumer Labs recommended prenatal because it's got a bunch of stuff and is super, super cheap and passes all their tests. So yeah, vegan or not, that's their top pick. I also take a separate DHA, more vitamin D. That's the one thing the prenatal doesn't have a lot of is vitamin D, some choline and a probiotic. And that is all less than $15 per month. And for antioxidants, I eat fruits and vegetables. Sometimes. Kind of irrelevant, but I just, their website layout is the worst thing ever. Okay, that's dramatic, but it's, it's terrible. So you go to the homepage and you see, get your AG1. Now, typically that would take you to the product page, right? Where you can see reviews and the supplement facts, right? The information that you want before you purchase something, but no. Instead, it takes you to this. Why try AG1? 75 ingredients, comprehensive nutrition, backed by science. Okay, whatever. Surely the next one will take you to the product page, right? What the what? They want me to choose a size? <laughs> I don't even know what's in it. What 75 ingredient? What? What is it? You click next and oh goody, I get to choose a one-time purchase or a subscription. How could I possibly know if I want to buy this or not? $99 for one 30 serving packet and I know next to nothing about this product. And you click the button and it takes you to the fucking checkout page. Not once have they said, hey, here's what's in this amazing. Yes, they do have a supplements page and you can back out of this whole thing anytime. You're not locked into it or anything, but I, it still is just awful. I can't imagine selling a product for that price, something that people are going to eat without making it as easy as possible for them to see what's actually in it and instead pushing them into this purchase funnel. I, I just, it's, oh, seems sleazy. Seriously, if you ever see me promoting something like Athletic Greens. I have a brain tumor. Something is wrong. Please contact health professionals on my behalf. I need help. Thank you so much for watching. Have you tried Athletic Greens? Is it as nasty as it looks? I mean, I do appreciate the honesty here. They're not even trying to dress it up. Like that's, that's what it is. But yeah, have you tried it? What do you think? Let me know and like the video if you liked it. Subscribe, please. That is super helpful for me. I really appreciate it. Click the bell if you want to be notified when I do upload a new video. And thanks to patrons, of course, by patrons. Thank you so much. Patreon.com slash Unnatural Vegan. And I do post two exclusive videos there a month for $5 plus patrons. I just posted my controversial video for last month. I do a kind of vloggy style one, and then the other video is a controversial topic that's not related to veganism, so it doesn't really make sense to put on the main channel. Just posted that about a week or so ago, and yeah, that's it for me. Thank you so much, guys. New video soon. <laughs> sediment at the bottom of the container. Oh my lord. Significant, significant amount of sediment the bottom of the container. It just reminds me of when I tried to drink a glass of spirulina. <laughs> I don't know how much I put in, just the recommended amount. The color was really pretty, actually. It's a real, like, darker, kind of teal-ish green. It's really, really pretty. And I drank it and immediately vomited it up. <laughs> I kind of admire people's ability to chug stuff like this down. I, I can't, can't relate. How do you do it? something terrible and amazing happened with my phone. I realized that this was still on Android 8. I have a Galaxy S9. It has never updated since I got it last year, early last year, refurbished. I don't know how or why I didn't notice that. <laughs> I knew it was behind, but I didn't think it was that behind. I tried to update it and it just wouldn't. It was like, it's up to date. And I looked up and that's a common thing that happens, I guess. And so I figured out how to get the update 
and get the Freya and then flash it to Odin. I don't know what any of that means, but I did it and it worked. The phone like booted up and everything. Oh my God. I couldn't believe it. It was so exciting. And then I got Android media stopping, something like that. And I kept getting that message over and over and over again. Like every few seconds, you could barely do anything on the phone. So I looked it up. I did everything in order, exactly what they said to do, you know, delete caches and the Google Play Store partitions and whatever else. And then the last resort was a factory reset, which I did not want to do. I did not want to do. So how do you go back? <laughs> how, how do you go back? <laughs> And everyone was like, oh, that's real hard and you could break your phone. But here's how you do it if you want to try. And I tried and it just, no. <laughs> Odin was like, no, fail the first time. And then the second time it just didn't do anything. So I was like, okay, shit. So I did a factory reset. I back made sure everything was backed up and did a factory reset. Still thinking like, it's still going to do this. I'm going to have to like get a new phone. This is going to suck. Started up the phone got everything set up. Oh, it's great. It works. I don't get the Android media stopping thing anymore. It's, it's fantastic. So happy. 